Hello everybody, welcome back to WICR Off The Bounce. Fortunately today folks, we don't have David Lowry, he's on the road for his, with his team in the Iona Gales, go Gales, and I have my new guests with me, Brendan Clark and Armand Mateo. <laughs> if I said it right. <laughs> you said it right, Johnny, you said it right. <laughs> How you guys doing? Doing good, really good, one more day, Friday's coming up, I'm excited, Thanksgiving's around the corner. And then finals. Oh. Yep. Yeah, I need you guys' help for something. For Cosby Video Production, I'm trying to make a music video for Sean. Oh, hey. Hey, that's actually a good idea. It we, is hey, good. I, right? we actually do and need I need, it. like, I'm going to have a lot of stuff in the background. Like, I'm going to try and get him in my whip the top, <laughs> with the top down. Like, some, you know, some music video type stuff. And I'm then, like, with laughter. maybe, like, Jared Duncan in the background playing basketball like oh, what's the hey, do you remember that snickers commercial yeah that was good i'm trying to do some I, mean, I i still have the videos if you need it so you could do that yeah why don't I mean, you just I don't want to take your stuff though i can't do that no no, no the flow his song not just putting basketball dunking well no i it. gotta have him moving around stuff cosby doesn't want him standing in one spot but go his lyrics like if he was rapping well, go first on. of all sh you know the whole thing's gonna be like wait which song is it gonna be the realest no he's writing a new one. Oh yeah you tell him what you need to do he'll make yeah. it <laughs> That's the thing. I mean, Sean's going to send me a recording of it. I'm just going to upload it into Final Cut. Like, the thing is, I'm going to have B-roll playing in the background. And, like, Sean's going to be, like, lip-syncing. Because in the rap videos, don't they lip-sync most of the time? They don't actually no, do no, that yeah, live. They have to. No, well, they play the... the it's, it's like a voiceover of the song over. Exactly. That's yeah. why I'm going to try and do. But I'm not that technologically crafty. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, I'm going to need a little help. Oh, yeah. Right. Count me in. Right. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. So, today we're going to talk about... The Bulls. And normally, I like talking about the Bulls if Derrick Rose is in the lineup. When he's not in the lineup, it's... Yeah, it's just sad. Fate to dust. Uh, I mean, it's... What do you think, Brennan? Do you, do you see him finishing the season? Or do you see him not at all? Like, it's... He's not going to be there. I feel like... Wait, how many games has he missed so far? Was it like 8 plus? Is it close to 10? I know he missed six. Yeah, six. So I think about seven or eight that he's missed. See, my thing is, I just think I'd hope he finishes the season. But the thing is, it's the difference between finishing the season and getting a lot of games in. Yeah. He's uh, I'm just, I, I, I got to see him really try to buckle down and really try to stay healthy because that makes a fact that makes a difference between which games you play against really good teams and then crappy teams because i'd rather i yeah. want him to be there against really good teams like you know they have portland coming up yeah like they tomorrow mm -hmm. and then you want to see him for those games you don't want to see him against like what the bucks <laughs> so i mean i really hope that he really gets in at least at least like 70 some games six high 60 games in the season. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I, I don't think he'll get 70. I think maybe I'm also get 60. I mean, he sat out three games in a row. And this mm. is his seventh game this mm. season. I think right now this is the perfect time for him to be injured, though. Like, if you're going to make him get back to full strength, do it right now in the earlier part of the season. Yeah, exactly. Like, around January time, before All-Star break, you're going to want D-Rose at his best. And, like, right now is, is actually the, the best way to make him sit out games. I mean, he's not trying to force himself back on the court. Mm. He's got to start the recovering process, so I think yeah, he'll be definitely. all right. I agree. I agree with it. And what it has to do is his mental. Mental game, you have to have – your mind can play a lot of tricks on you. And that's one of the most powerful things that a human being can have. And so just to see him gone through what he's gone through, I mean, come on. <laughs> it's a lot. Torn ACL, some meniscus, everything. Yeah, no. like injury after injury. But the thing is, I always said, is he has to change his game. You can't yeah. play reckless. The way he used to be. Yeah. He, I mean, you got to think about Stephen Curry had ankle problems mm -hmm. because he would cut too fast. Mm -hmm. He changed the game. He 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 switched what he had to do, and look, he's one of the best point guards in the in the league. I think yeah, I think Derrick Rose needs to strive away from relying mm -hmm. on his athleticism. Mm -hmm. Him and Russell Westbrook have very similar games. They mm -hmm. try and like you know overpower their opponent yes. through their athleticism mm -hmm. and their footwork. It's absolutely incredible. Mm -hmm. So maybe if Derrick Rose can start. To become like a Stephen Curry, work on that jump shot. I mean, he would see himself playing 70 games every year consistently. Yeah. And I think now, even with the lineup that they have for this season, there's way more room for him to at least pass the ball more mm -hmm. than for him to really drive in because he has a lot of scoring opportunities just waiting for him at the three-point line. Yeah. So they're just ready to go. Definitely. And 
Me and David Lowry have been talking about it a lot. It's if the Bulls mm-hmm. want to take the championship this year, the year, this year's the they have to do it this year. I mean, because yeah, yeah. if you let Cleveland get more comfortable than what it is, and what they have, I mean, they're gonna start dominating within the few years. I, I think Chicago's right now better than Cleveland. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. This yeah, is the year yeah, to do this it. Is the year. Yeah, I think they can get to the finals. I don't know if they can overpower a Western Conference opponent. Yeah, it was. Uh, Why well, I I, did, I need to see them against more Eastern teams. Like I need to see them again with Derrick Rose against yeah. um Washington. Yeah, Washington I like their I like their squad, mm-hmm. and they got Bill back. Yeah, so I got to see them get play against them in a series or something like that. Um, but yeah, like I really got to see Derrick Rose really be competitive and not be hurt. And yeah. I hope that none of his injuries also have to correlate to like other injuries he's previously had. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. But it would it would still suck if each injury that he actually had was just something different. Then it would just be really like devastating. I yeah. think another part of Derrick Rose's you know comeback is going to have to fall upon uh, Jimmy Butler if he can remain mm-hmm. that emerging factor and sort of that sidekick mm-hmm. that he is for the Bulls right now. That would also help Derrick Rose because he wouldn't have to put the the burden on his back as much. In games and wouldn't have yeah. to do as many crazy athletic moves as you know he would normally have to do. Yeah. And now I'm gonna get into the like 2K mode when I play, and this is what I do. I always have Kirk Heinrich starting at point guard, so it's not so much pressure on Derrick Rose and put Derrick Rose as <laughs> shooting guard, <laughs> Even you know, <laughs> and then have Jimmy Butler as a small forward, and then put Paul Gasol at power mm-hmm. power forward, and then center Joakim Noah. I feel like that would be so much better for Derrick Rose. And sorry, folks, this is just a game state of mind. <laughs> you know, this isn't something that might happen, but just... You should talk to Thibodeau it about it. Tweet yeah, at him. <laughs> tweet it. Send an email. Every social media. Even if I have to make a YouTube clip just to get an idea out there. I mean, it's just... Right. I think that's just the best idea. Just put him at shooting guard. If he wants to score, let him perfect his jump shot and his three. I mean, that's what shooting guards do. They shoot, but I they also drive, you know. But he just needs to be careful. I think that, yeah, of course he has to be careful. I, but I think that at the shooting guard, I think with his mentality of also just coming to the league as a point guard, he's mm. going to have the mentality to drive it to the hole even more to try to kick it out again. Yeah. Cause I think that's what it is with being a point guard. You have to try to drive, make a move, and then dish it out. But as a shooting guard, if he's at that position to score, he's going to score. Mm. Like, yeah, yeah. Put a Westbrook there, he'll have even more reason to not pass. Yeah, you know? I, feel, I agree with Brendan. I feel yeah. like if... I mean, the one thing that's beneficial in this situation is he does have the physicality to play the shooting guard. Derrick Rose yeah. is a pretty stocky dude. I mean, he's mm-hmm. probably, what, 6'3", 6'4"? Mm-hmm. I mean, shooting guards are like 6'5". He can pull it off. Yeah. I feel like he would try and become more of a slasher. He yeah. actually might put himself in a more strenuous state yeah. by being a shooting guard than at a point guard. Yeah. So, I don't know. I mean, it's a good thought, though. Yeah. No, it's just I, I, I'm just trying to figure out ways for him because... <laughs> I honestly don't see him finishing this season if this continues. Yeah. And I hate saying that because I'm a huge fan of Derrick Rose, so I want to see him succeed. And all I'm asking is just one championship for him. Mm-hmm. I'm not asking to... Yeah, just want one yeah. in his hometown yeah. before LeBron. That's it. <laughs> it's just amazing. Yeah, that's all I want from him, and he definitely deserves it. He well, really does deserve it. What you said, though, about the putting Comrade at the PG mm-hmm. does make sense only because Aaron Brooks has been doing great. Mm-hmm. And, and he, he, yeah. yeah, they always have quality point guards. Whoever comes into the in the Bulls organization mm-hmm. as a point guard while Derrick Rose is out actually has developed and really become a real attribute to the team. Yeah. So, but the thing is, who would be, um, who would you say if Derrick Rose would you put him at the two? Who would be after him as a at a ball handling kind of position? Backing up the two. Yeah. Because yes, you move Jimmy Butler to the third, to the three, and mm-hmm. then you could have Noah and Pau Gasol four or five or whatever. Then you have Taj Gibson by the. Four I mean, you have Dunley V and yeah. McDermott, but totally different style of basketball play. Those are spot up shooters. Yeah, yeah. They, like if they had another, if, it would make sense for you, exactly what you're doing. If they had another ball handler, mm-hmm. yeah. Because right out, right off the bat, you just put two ball handlers there. And um, Jimmy Butler. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. So, yeah. So that's maybe yeah. for the future to mm-hmm. look forward to. Possibly. Mm-hmm. If you really need him in, like, the clutch or something mm-hmm. like that, you could definitely do it. Yeah, because Brooks is playing fantastic. I mean, he's great backup player. I do like Brooks. I think he's a great basketball player, but I do not like the move to Chicago made in the offseason. They got rid of DJ Augustine. DJ Augustine was yeah. a great I guy during him. that was run. Amazing, yeah. Like, he came into Derrick Rose's role, and he actually played pretty good. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I didn't. I think they should have brought him back. I like Brooks, but DJ Augustine's a great shooter. I feel like he's better at breaking down the defense. The only thing Brooks has on him is he's a better penetrator. He can yeah. score 
more athletic a little. Mm-hmm. But I think Augustine should have been stayed as a bull. No, n- now that you even mentioned that, they should have kept Nate Robinson. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Nate, Nate Robinson, Robinson too. Anybody they had, anybody that came into that organization came out with something like, wow, like you, you put him to that spotlight. Like, DJ Augustine, who was he on the Bobcats? And then what other team was before that? I forgot what team. But he came in the Bulls, and you really got to see him. You really got to see him like, wow, this guy is really something. And Nate I mean, that's too. why I found out about him on the Bobcats. I didn't know he played anywhere else. Yeah, but like when he's on the Pistons now, he's yeah, not, I mean, he's yeah. playing okay, but but I think you know, even Nate Robinson, nobody really think Nate Robinson. Nate Robinson, you see him as like a bench player, a bench mm, point guard yeah. just coming off. You never really see him as a starter, but coming there and really producing while D Rose is hurt was big, it was huge. He came in the clutch, yeah, yeah, they, especially this series with the Nets. Yeah. When they when they played against each other in the playoffs, they won a game seven. Yeah. Nate Robinson was the one that saved that series. I think Nate Robinson's a great player to have any, on any team yes. because he's such an electrifying player off the mm-hmm. bench. He's a hype man. Yeah. He's very into like team oriented basketball. He loves his teammates. He's always fighting. Mm-hmm. And I think that someone like a Nate Robinson definitely makes a team better. It sparks up the bench. It makes yeah, these guys exactly. motivated. And like you know, mm-hmm. he's similar to your boy over there in LA, Nick Nick Young. Mm-hmm. Same type of basketball mm-hmm. player. Both entertaining guys off the mm-hmm. bench to watch swaggy Pete. yeah <laughs> I, I was talking to somebody today about like god forbid d rose does not come back but say he say okay i'm gonna say like six years down the line say he doesn't come back the one point guard i'd want for the bulls organization is beverly oh there is nobody else that i see why as, do you like beverly his tenacity the way he just he's so hungry like you just you love it, and he's getting his three point percentages better, and his defense. And he just thing. he's always on his point. I love I, him defensively. Yeah, yeah, offensively, yeah. I don't like him. Defensively, one of the best perimeter yeah. defenders in the league, yeah, without definitely. question. But exactly. offensively, I don't like what he brings to the table. If you think about him on the defensive end, him and Noah together, just being hype. You know how electrifying that the he definitely would fits be? the system. Oh man, it'd be perfect. Yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely. All right, folks, sit back tight. This is off the bounce. And next, we're going to be talking about Swaggy P.